Today I'm gonna answer a question that come up all the time in my stream on the YouTube comment. It's always the same one. How does Linux perform versus Windows in gaming? Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Some of our questions that come up in this type of like exchange with my viewer are, you know, about the latency, the input lag. Um, the fact that the game might be more stuttery on Windows or on Linux. I think all those questions are really related to one topic, which is performance. Even if I've been using Linux for more than 18 months now, and I've been gaming on it and creating content a lot, what, what I can tell you is that there is not an easy answer. And there is not like one benchmark which is going to give you an overall idea of what is the real performance difference between Linux and Windows. But in this specific scenario, I'm going to create and this specific, I would say, process, I would like to give you an overall like idea of what it is. So I won't be talking about the exception, but more overall about how it looks like to game on Linux. And, and I've been thinking a lot about it. My first idea was really to benchmark a lot of games, but benchmarking a lot of games won't give you the full story. I think the full story will come through this process. As I said, there is not an answer that will fit everything. And it won't for a simple reason. On one hand, you have windows that come up really straightforward with no option for creating your desktop environment or your Windows manager. And on the other hand, you have Linux, which is highly customizable. So depending on the distro, the desktop environment, the Windows manager, you're going to have to deal with the kernel you choose. You're going to have a, a totally different experience, right? The second thing is that the game they are not made for Linux, most of them. They are made for Windows, which means you're going to have to go through uh, Proton Wine, which is going to have like, which is going to have a little overhead on top of everything. But you will see it's, it's not that bad. Uh, I, I will show it with number, like something really concrete, right? Let's take a look at my hardware spec real quick. You can pause the video if you want. My idea was to find a game which doesn't really give an advantage to Windows or Linux, and especially Linux, and which also has an integrated benchmark into it. Like that's going to make the whole experience way smoother. And we won't have any type of exterior variable which is going to impact the result of this benchmark. So the game I choose was Horizon Zero Dawn. I run the benchmark in Ultra. I'm going to share with you the different setting I use. And the idea is to run a benchmark in Ultra in different conditions to see what is really impacting the performance on both platforms. Because I'm a content creator, the circumstance I'm using my hardware is totally different from someone who just want to enjoy running a game on his PC. So let's, let me give you a simple example. If I want to stream, I'm going to have to have OBS running. And as you know, OBS is interacting with the performance of the game because it's taking up resource from the computer. And also, like, I need at least, like, two screens. I can't stream and create content with only one screen because I need to read my chat. I need to see the OBS windows. I need to understand what's going on. If you are using Windows, it wouldn't make a big difference to use one or two or three screens. But maybe if you are using Linux, it might make a huge difference. And this is a point I discovered while using Linux. And I want to share the outcome with you guys because I think it's pretty interesting. So this is a case where you are just gaming on your computer. You just use like one monitor. You play your game. Nothing else is running. It's a, I would call that a raw benchmark. As you can see, there is like two big takeaway from this slide. The first one is that the average FPS on Linux is a little bit lower than the one on Windows. Windows 10 is actually 9.5% faster on average on Windows and on Linux. For the maximum FPS, it's like a margin of error 
you have like 10, 10 different FPS there. I think it's like 2%. So it's not really important. But the second takeaway, which is important in my opinion, is the fact that the FPS minimum, if you look at them, they are higher on Linux than on Windows and by a big margin of 12.1%. If you are not in the content creation, if you are not willing to record video, if you don't own multiple screen connected to your graphic card, this is the, the benchmark you want to look at. And you want to look at this benchmark because this is really relative or representative of what the experience on Linux versus Windows is. It's simple as that you have, I would say overall, like a 10% decrease in terms of FPS average. And on top of that, you're going to have like higher FPS for the minimum. And this could explain certain scenarios where some of the game, they feel way smoother. I felt it in all the game I played on Linux. And the real question you should ask yourself right now is that, does this difference in terms of FPS is going to impact my gameplay and the experience in game? That's, that's, that's the first one. Another question that come back a lot is related to the input lag. If you watch my previous video about optimizing Linux with the Nvidia card on Apex Legend, I really invite you to go there, rewatch it again, and look at all the different steps I went through to make sure I had the best input lag possible. I can guarantee you that you won't see any difference. If you go to a game where the performance was really low on Windows and you get even lower on Linux, you might feel it. Or maybe it's related to your hardware and you are really like struggling to get those 60 FPS, 150 FPS if you have a 144 Hz or 300 FPS if you are running like me uh, 270 Hz. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that the problem is not really related to Windows itself. It's related to your hardware. It's not related to Linux either. It's just related to your hardware. The gap between the two operating systems is not big enough for you to say, hey, no, it's too slow. I can't run it on Linux. Now, if it's too slow at this point, it's because your hardware is not strong enough. End of the story. To give you an example, if I run Overwatch, and I've made a video about that too, like I invite you to look at it. On Windows, I would have 600 FPS almost locked all the time. I go on Linux, I will be around like five, 550 at the same point of view. So again, I lose around like 10%. Does it destroy my, my experience? No. Does it make me a noob? Not at all. And I'm telling you that coming from a perspective of someone who is really competitive, who actually made money, like winning competition, I, I have this state of mind. And I'm telling you, you won't see the difference. Another point I want to bring here before moving to the other result, this 12% increase in terms of like minimum FPS can make a huge difference when you play video game which are not optimized. I already mentioned it, but I want to state it again. This can be huge. If you are in a game where you are only like 100 FPS and you are struggling, but you want to make sure you don't go under this 60 FPS because when you go under 60 FPS, this is where it hurts. Well, Linux might be a good opportunity for you. That will be the advantage over Windows. Let's say now you are a content creator like me, or let's say now you have multiple monitors and you just want to enjoy your game while doing something else on the side. Is Linux like still performing the same? Well, not really. So here you are looking at the graph where I'm plugging free monitor and I'm rerunning the benchmark on both. And as you can see, the consistency on Windows is like flat. It doesn't change anything. But when you look at Linux, boo, we took a big, big hit. My minimum FPS like dropped. If you look at my average FPS, they drop like crazy. And also my maximum FPS, they drop. This is linked to a simple reason. On Linux, you have something called a compositor. And the compositor is what makes your desktop environment beautiful. You can customize it. You can do a lot of things. It's taking a lot, lot of resources. And if you try to extend the compositor to multiple monitors, this is the type of result you're going to get. 
And that's the reason why, again, if you look at the other video I made, I always encourage you guys to deactivate the compositor no matter what, because I don't know what type of monitor setup you have. If you are just running on one uh, monitor, disabling the compositor won't really impact you. But if you let the compositor on with free monitor, that's the type of result you get. And here we have a huge decrease of FPS minimum 37%, 38% almost. And you have a decrease of average FPS of 26%. So from my perspective, at this point, the game is just unplayable for me. I, I just can't play the game. And this is one of the issues I had when I switched to Linux, because I was like, what is this? It, it just doesn't work. And I'm pretty sure a lot of users are trying Linux and they're like, what, what is this? I have a 1490. And I can't get a 60 FPS content constant experience. Like, what is this? And this is a trick. I redid all those benchmarks, but I did it with the compositor off. And now look at those FPS. We are back on track. The key takeaway here is that by deactivating the compositor and keeping my free monitor on, I just lost 3% of performance toward uh, my one screen benchmark on Linux. So it's still playable. I still have more FPS, minimum FPS than on Windows. I just have a little bit less. And I still am behind in terms of FPS average, but not by that much. So we were like 10, like nine and a half, and now we are like 13% behind. So it's, it's not that bad. Still play, plenty playable for me. Not a problem. But you have to think about it, okay? Depending on your monitor setup, you're going to take the hit. Now, is it a big hit? You decide. For me, 4%, 4 it's nothing. Now, let's talk about the content creation aspect because I want to go really deep into this benchmark. I'm not going to do a lot of benchmark. I'm not, I'm not super fan of it, to be fair. But I want to give you like a real vision of what it could be, okay? And how Linux make everything a little bit more complex at the end. What we are looking at right now is me using OBS to record the benchmark on both Windows and Linux. And what I notice, no matter what OS you have, when you launch OBS and you start to capture a game, you're going to have a little bit of decrease in FPS in the game. It's normal. It's because it's using resource. It's not crazy, but it's there. So I've done it, redone the benchmark for Windows 10 and Linux. So just to give you an idea, the OBS impact on Windows was around like 4% decrease in terms of average FPS, but it was 19% in terms of minimum FPS. So you take a huge decrease on the minimum FPS. And it's, it was actually pretty interesting to watch because you get it where it hurts on Windows. You have highest average, you have highest, I would say like, high FPS, but your minimum FPS got demolished. It moved like from a 13% to 15% decrease between Windows to Linux. But if you look at the minimum FPS, you can see there is an increase. So this is where Linux shine, right? Because now, yes, you have less FPS overall, but your base of FPS minimum is just higher. I know some of you guys don't care. You just want to have the top, the top FPS possible. From my perspective, having a minimum FPS is way more important because this is what causes the stutter. This is what causes like the, all those little itch that I can't stand anymore, especially with my hardware. I'm in a position where when you use a 270 Hertz monitor, if you go under 140 frames per second, I'm going to tell you this is bad. This is really bad. My screen starts to be blurry. I can see everything not running as smooth as it's supposed to be. I need to be at least at 220, 240 FPS to enjoy it at its max potential. So how should I conclude this video? Because there is a lot of information you have to digest here. I could go the simple route and tell you that gaming on Linux is smoother because the minimum FPS are overall higher than on Windows. So yes, you lose average FPS overall, but is it really important? 
it's at your point to figure it out. If I want to go a little bit, I would say deeper in the conclusion, I would say that now you know that the minimum FPS are higher on Linux. And depending on your hardware and depending on the way you're going to set up your machine with Linux, you might have a better experience. But this is on your end. This is not on my end because this is the beauty of Linux. You can do whatever you want with it and you can make it work like pretty nice like I do. Or you can totally mess it up because you have no idea of what you are doing. And my purpose on this channel is not to convert you to Linux. That's not my intention. My purpose of this channel is to share my experience and show you what type of path you could be blocked on or you could just like fly through if you decide to go for Linux. I know, I know Linux is not perfect. And the usage you're going to make out of it will really depend on so many factors that I can't really give you any advice or take out any like big, 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 huge takeaway out of those benchmarks. Because truth is, depending on your hardware, let's say you have an AMD card, for example, well, those benchmarks, they make no sense at all. Because it has been proven that the AMD driver on Linux, the open source one, are just better than the one on Windows. So overall, no matter what you do, you're going to have more FPS on Linux, for example. And this is, this is the trick. It's really hard for me to get out with one big truth. This is what I said at the beginning of the video. But for my personal case, with my knowledge of Linux, with the setting you know, I, I, I put together with my hardware, this is a snapshot of what my experience on Linux is right now. If I have one advice, I would say, you are curious to do it? Let's try it. Buy a second SSD, go on there and see if it works for you. Because I see a lot of comments where most of the viewers are like, yeah, but I don't know, I don't know. It, it won't cost you anything. It's going to cost you one SSD. I'm pretty sure you have one running around or even like a USB, an extra USB key you have. You put it there, you install Linux on it, you try. You might love it or you might hate it, but at least you tried. But I can't tell right now what's going to be the result with your hardware and also like the knowledge and what you know about Linux out of your, you know, little experiment. So yeah, that's it. That's all. I hope you enjoy the content and I hope I answer some of your questions, guys, because now I'm going to give this video to all of you when you're asking me this question. I'm going to put a link towards it. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to give a like to this video, to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help me financially, it will be really helpful. You can do it by becoming a member of this YouTube channel or go directly to Patreon and become a Patreon. Guys, have a great one and see you later. Bisous, bisous.